Hi, I'm Kyle Watson, coming to you live from Syracuse, New York. We're on this rainy Saturday. We are less than seven hours away from a big matchup in the Dome between, the Sy between Syracuse and NC State, which will be televised at 7 p.m. on ESPN2. Now, Syracuse is one game away from being bowl eligible. And they are also coming, coming off of just eking out a win against UNC. Now, you may be asking, well, I looked at the standings, Colin, and UNC is one and five. And so why did it take a why did it take a five and two Syracuse team two overtimes to beat a UNC team that they should have beat anyway? Well, I'm glad you asked. It took that long because of some mistakes, defensive lapses, and and poor special teams, poor special teams play, and that's why it took two overtimes. Now, it wasn't all the offense. It was some of the defense. The defense parted like the Red Sea, especially when North Carolina was running the ball. Running back Antonio Williams had 116 yards and got a touchdown off of a defense that prides itself on bending and not breaking. And also, wide receiver Daz Newsom also put up some big numbers against, against, against Syracuse. He had, he had seven receptions for 90 yards and one touchdown, which was a, which was a rushing touchdown, which happened earlier in the second quarter. He also, he also shared the wealth with the special teams because he exploited them for a 75-yard punt return. Now, on the Syracuse side, Syracuse was up 13-7 to uh, when halftime, by halftime, and they were up 20-7 to after a 16-yard Dungy QB run. But that was the last good offensive play that Syracuse had until late in the fourth quarter. And by then, Eric Dungy wasn't the quarterback because Tommy DeVito had been inserted because Dungy just did not do well in this game. He had he completed 17 to 33 passes for 225 yards and once again had more rushing touchdowns than passing touchdowns. Now, Dungy, if I could compare him to somebody, is like a poor man's version of Vince Young without the arm and like a 50% and like a 50% off version of Tim Tebow. He's just, he's a quarterback that will run first and pass later. He's not, a, he, he's a quarterback that will beat you with his legs rather than his arm. And UNC was daring him to throw, not allowing him really to run. And he just could not deliver. And it wasn't just him. There were, his receivers were dropping passes. Sometimes he threw it, he threw it behind his receivers because Dungy is a very inaccurate quarterback. He's sometimes he's on, sometimes he's sometimes he's off. And so head coach Dino Babers would go on to say they felt like the team needed a spark and that they had to do something different. And when it turned out that something different was was inserting Tommy DeVito. And once he inserted DeVito, it's like it was like a shock to the system to the offense that they needed because they started moving the ball again. They got a field goal. They were able to get a 42-yard touchdown, which will ultimately tie the game from a beautifully thrown ball from DeVito, where only his receiver, Nikeen Johnson, could get it. And that would tie the game. Now, DeVito didn't, didn't look like an experienced quarterback through most of this game. He gave up an interception that would have that would have sealed the game for, for, for the yards had if he just had thrown the ball, if he just had thrown the ball a little bit higher. But Good things come to those who wait because DeVito then would hit Jamal Custis for a 20 yard, for a 20 yard pass that would get them, that would help Syracuse get the lead in the first overtime. But ultimately the defense would let the offense down because they allowed a touchdown, a touchdown pass, which sealed, which tied the game as well. But in the second overtime, the defense came up big, only allowing a field goal, and DeVito delivered the goods, delivering a well-thrown crossing pass to tight end Ravion Johnson. And that would seal the game. That would, put, that would put the Orange on the cusp of being bowl eligible, which brings us to tonight. And if I am Dino Babers, I'm starting Tommy DeVito over Eric Dungy because Dungy has proven that he is a good quarterback who can keep you in games, but he won't win you games. Tommy DeVito can win you games, and he is the quarterback that Babers recruited for this offense, whereas Dungy is just a QB that Babers was stuck with. And now 
now is the time where you can make a switch. Because if you start Dungy and it doesn't go well and you have to pull him again, his confidence may be shot as he's on the eve of senior day against Louisville in a week and a half. But the the but Syracuse really has to deliver the goods because in a couple of weeks they face Notre Dame and they need all the games they can get. And I'm predicting if he starts Tommy DeVito, the the Orange will win at least nine games, maybe even ten. And be bowl el not only be bowl eligible, but the difference between starting Eric Dungy and Tommy DeVito will be the difference between the Penn Stripe Bowl for for Syracuse and a bigger and better bowl maybe later in December or maybe even in January.